Hola, Niha, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Shambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jadley, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are so very thankful that you're a part of our mission to help families grow closer through reading. We're really excited to have you as part of our family. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Rajani LaRocca. She'll be here to celebrate her middle grade novel in verse, red, white, and whole. Before we invite Rajani in the studio, we have to give a big shout out to all my new friends in Mr. Nile's second grade class at the Joseph E. Lee School in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston, Massachusetts. Had a great time performing for them virtually just last week. What a great group of kids. And the Joseph E. Lee School is so very important to me. When I had this crazy idea that I was going to present educational magic and comedy and clowning shows in schools around the country, the, the way I got my start, the way I learned how to do this thing was by doing shows in the Boston Public Schools. And the Joseph E. Lee School was one of those uh, of those great schools that opened up their doors to me and gave me a shot. And, and then we filmed my Disabilities Awareness video, Meltdown, the Walls of Separate, on the Joseph E. Lee Auditorium stage. So many great memories. So great to be back with, uh, with new friends at the Joseph E. Lee School. If you are interested in inviting me into your community, you can find out about our virtual shows and also about our in-person shows by going to readingwithyourkids.com, click on the Parents Click Here button, and scroll on down to Live Events. Join us right now from Concord in Massachusetts. We could have done this with Dixie Cups and a string, I think. We're so close together. Um, our guest today is celebrating the release of Red, White, and Whole. Please welcome to the show, Rajani LaRocca. Rajani, how are you? I'm great, Jed. Thank you so much for having me uh, on your show. I, I love talking to neighbors. Uh, Rajani and I were just talking earlier about Boston, living in the Boston area. It is it's it's a wonderful city. Yes, it is a wonderful city. And um, I live in a suburb of Boston now, but I still tell people from other parts of the country that I live in Boston. <laughs> it's well, just easier. <laughs> uh, of, of course you do. I, I, you know, I, I, I think I've told this on, on the podcast before. My daughter, uh, when she was in high school, she would come out on tour with me. Um, oftentimes I was pre- presenting my educational magic show. And we would go and do the shows in the, in the day and then come back to the hotel and always meet people. And, you know, it's you're on the elevator and, hey, how are you? Where are you from? And people go, oh, yeah, from from Boston. And my daughter was very friendly. And she goes, oh, what neighborhood? And they would say, well, Concord or Worcester or Pittsfield. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd say, that's not Boston. <laughs> Right. It's only people from Boston that would know that. But people in the rest of the country, they're like, yeah, sure, Boston. It's all Boston, right? (laughs) Well, you know, the funniest, the funniest thing, um, uh, I was down in Puerto Rico, I think it was during our honeymoon, and my beautiful wife and I were on a beach, and there were a couple of kids uh, from from the the town where the beach was uh, uh, with us, and we're just talking to them, getting into this uh, conversation, and they asked where where we were from, and, and I said Boston and Massachusetts, and he pointed out across the ocean, and he said, "Oh, you're from out there," <laughs> and I said, "Yes, I am a long way out there." <laughs> <laughs> very very far. Very out very there, far. Exactly. <laughs> So tell yeah. us, please, about Red, White, and Whole. I love this. It's a very provocative title. Thank you. Um, it is uh, a middle grade novel in verse. Uh, Red, White, and Whole is set in 1983, and it is about uh, a 13-year-old girl named Reha who feels uh, torn between the worlds of her Indian immigrant parents 
and her friends at school where she's the only Indian American student. And so, you know, she's into the typical teenager stuff, um, 80s pop music, and she wants to wear, you know, 80s fashion. Um, but her, she feels like her parents don't really understand her, especially her mom. Um, and she can't kind of figure out why the people who love her this much can't understand um, that she wants to be like her friends. But then her mother uh, is diagnosed with uh, a form of cancer called leukemia, and she, so she's really ill. And um, Reha feels like her whole world is kind of turned upside down. And so this is a story that has science and poetry. It's written in poetry. Um, it has um, Hindu mythology and 80s pop music. And it's about kind of being torn between worlds, but finding a way to be whole. Wow, fascinating. First off, I just have to, and this is just a personal thing. It's just because of, of how old I am. But I don't know. It's just so weird when someone says, oh, it's set back in 1983 and, you know, sounding like it's, you know, before the dinosaurs. And I think back and, th- and, and realize I was like in my 30s back then. <laughs> Back in 1980, <laughs> like I was alive back in history. I I know, I know. When I have to describe this book as historical, it makes me super sad. But it is historical for you know for kids these days. <laughs> well, you know, I, it, as you were describing the book, it's obviously it's it's unique in in that it's a uh, you know, young woman from uh, an Indian background. But she's dealing with a lot of the same kind of feelings and in, in turmoil and issues that kids from all different cultures have to deal with. Absolutely. I think it's one of the universals of adolescence mm-hmm. um, is that you feel like you're different um, from your parents and the, the things that they want, want aren't necessarily the things that you can do as much as the, the character in this novel uh, respects and adores her parents. She really loves them. Um, and she understands why they feel the way they do. She still feels like, um, she's separated from them and they don't understand where she's coming from. Mm-hmm. Now, was part of the, the inspiration for this book autobiographical? Oh, yes. Um, I will say that, uh, the story itself is fiction, but so many of the emotions were real emotions that I felt. Um, and, uh, the music, there, there's a lot of music in this story, um, because, uh, Rehaz loves, uh, 80s pop music as I did. And a lot of the poem titles are, uh, titles of songs. Um, so the music was a real inspiration. And I use this as a vehicle to talk about some of my favorite songs from the 80s. Well, I, I have to go there. Can you share some of those favorite songs with us? Oh, yes. So, um, girls just want to have fun okay. is one of the first ones that, uh, that is mentioned. And I absolutely loved, um, Cindy Lauper's She's on, She's So Unusual album. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a big influence on me at the time. Um, there's a one hit wonder called, um, Always Something There to Remind Me, that song by Naked Eyes. Um, that song was, I was obsessed with that song and I loved that music video. Um, of course, we can't talk about 1983 without talking about Everybody's Take, but, the police. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was like the number one song back there then. Um, yeah, and then some Pat Benatar, too, to round us out. Yeah. <laughs> Love yeah. is a battlefield and we belong. <laughs> you know, you mentioned the police. I, w- I just uh, I, I had this like weird thing in the car and I decided, well, I'm going to just download their, their catalog. I ha- I'm able to listen to all their music, so I'll, I'll download it. And I was listening to it and it's great and it brought back so many memories. But a lot of the songs, if they're, if it's really creepy, you know, like Every Breath You Take and I'll Be Watching You and <laughs> Don't Stand So Close to Me. <laughs> yes, some of those lyrics are a little bit like, hmm. But you know what? The music is still good. It is. And we really have to just, we just have to accept it for the time that it was. Um, absolutely. Tell me, I'm just trying to, trying to wrap my head around your, your your parents' reaction coming from a traditional Indian background in culture, you know, coming in and maybe watching you dance around to the Girls Just Want to Have Fun music video. <laughs> you know, they were, my parents were, were super chill about all of these things. Um, when MTV first came out, we didn't have it. Like, you know, you had to like, yeah. whatever, get it with a certain package or something. So we had, um, I had a friend who had it and I would spend 
all this time over at that person's house. We would spend hours. Like, we would spend so many, there would be a group of us, and there would be so many of us, like, we would watch it for so long that the videos would loop, and mm -hmm. we didn't care. We were mm -hmm. like, that's fine. So <laughs> my parents were very, very um, uh, relaxed about the whole thing. They, they, you know, they basically trusted me. And, uh, yeah, so... Um, and similar to the the parents in this story as well, they you know they don't have any problem with the music. In fact, um, the music is one of the ways in which they bond, um, mm -hmm. in which Reha bonds with her uh, parents because everyone listens to the same music on the radio. Oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah, it doesn't happen these days, does it? <laughs> I think it depends. I um, there's there's a large overlap between uh, the kind of music I like and the kind that my children like, and they're you know they're young adults. Um, but there are definitely some realms where they think it's hilarious or they, you know, appreciate some kind of music that I'm like, eh, I'm not, I'm not that into it, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to give away a secret here. When, uh, I was watching the Super Bowl the other day and I was curious as to who was going to do the halftime show, I, I reached out to my daughter who's in the music industry and I said, so, so, so who are the neighborhood and, uh, or, or the weekend? Uh, who's the weekend? How many are, how many people are in the weekend? And she goes, this one person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His name is the weekend. <laughs> his name is the weekend. I, I, <laughs> I, I know. He did a great show though. And his music is really fun. He, he sings some pretty catchy music, I would say. Well, well yeah. As I was listening, I go, Oh, I know. This, his name is the weekend. Okay. I didn't know that, but I know the music and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I know. <laughs> Tommy, what, I, I'd like to get a little bit more into, um, you know, since the experience is such a big part of Red, White, and Whole, what was mm -hmm. it like growing up in in the United States, the daughter of, of immigrants from, of, from a culture that's very different? Yeah. So, you know, um, I grew up uh, in the 70s and 80s, and I spent, uh, I grew up pretty much all of that time I spent in Louisville, Kentucky, which is a wonderful city. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, there was a, just like Reha in the book, there's a, a, a sizable but not enormous Indian community there. And uh, that community was small enough so that we kind of knew everybody. Like we became friends with everybody. Um, and, you know, India is a place where there are so many different languages and kind of you know, microcultures and, um, you know, people of different religions and like people from different regions are, can be very different from one another. Mm -hmm. Um, but because the community wasn't that huge, we got to know everybody and it was kind of fun in that way. I had, um, other relatives who grew up in, um, Houston, Texas, which has a much larger Indian community and they literally hung out only with people who spoke their language. Mm -hmm. I was, I was flabbergasted when I heard this. I was like, wow. But anyway, we had a nice, close knit community in Louisville and um and you know Louisville is a very progressive city. They had things called heritage weekends where like during the summer every weekend they would there would be groups from kind of two or three different cultures like putting on performances and serving food and it was just, you know, really great. Um but I have to say that it was challenging at times because I felt like um you know every, all week long I would be at school. Um, kind of immersed in American culture and studying and doing things like that. And then every weekend I would spend it with um, my parents and uh, my, our Indian friends and which was wonderful. And I loved both, but they sometimes felt very, very separate from one another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, it, and there were a couple of times like, you know, uh, <laughs> there's an, I was, when you were, we were dressed up after an Indian dance performance and like, we'd go into like McDonald's or something and order fries and somebody just like looked at me and was like, do you speak English? And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so there, there were times when it just felt like, uh, I lived in two worlds and that was part of what I tried to convey in the book. Well, you, you really did. Um, you know, the, it is really two different worlds and, and two different cultures. And I actually think that that's a benefit, but I'm also almost a hundred years old. And, and so I can, you know, kind of, kind of appreciate that. It's much harder to appreciate that, uh, as a, as a teenager, as somebody growing up. Yes. And, you know, and I will tell you that I've always kind of felt like, 
a slightly strange person. Like I always, <laughs> I always feel like I've always got something, something else going on. Right. So I grew up, you know, I'm Indian American and, you know, I kind of felt like there was these two halves of my life um, when I was growing up. Um, I went to college and I knew that I was going to go into medicine. I'm a doctor now. So I was pre-med, but then I was a government major because I finished, I figured when, am, when else am I going to get to study this? So I was an odd person because I was in, I was taking, you know, the kind of hard science classes and then I was hanging out with all the, you know, government nerds, mm -hmm. which was interesting. Um, and ultimately, you know, I, I am a practicing physician and I also write books for kids. So I'm always, I always feel like I have a foot in two different worlds. And I think one of the themes of this book is that, um, and, and you can appreciate this as an adult, but it is really hard as a, as a teenager, um, is that you choose where you belong. Mm -hmm. And even though there are different parts of you, like that doesn't mean that you have to be split. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, imagine for a minute, you know, you were talking about, you know, being weird and, you know, diff all these different words, even now, um, imagine myself and my beautiful wife, when we went to, buy our first car, get a mortgage for the home, and they asked me what my profession was, and I put down professional clown. We, we got a lot of different looks back then. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, right? I know. Well, you know, it's really interesting. Um, you remember, I, I mean, I guess game shows might do this now, but definitely when I was growing up, when somebody was on a game show, they would be like, you know, meet John. Mm -hmm. He's a, you know, lawyer from, you know, uh, you know, Columbus, Ohio. And like everyone had like one thing that right. could kind of describe them. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, wow, like I, I mean, I don't think there's one thing that describes right. me. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I think because uh, I think too many times we, uh, people pigeonhole themselves and they think of they're just, I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor, I'm a writer. And, uh, yeah, you are, but there's more to you than that, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. One thing I wanted to share with you, when you were growing up down in Louisville, I was here in Boston, and I would sneak my you know, the transistor radio into my bed at night and put it under my pillow. And there was a talk show host here in Boston on the overnight shift. His name was Larry Glick. And if someone would call up and say, uh, Larry, I'm an Indian American. I'm an Irish American. I'm an Italian American. He would always correct them and say, no, no, no. You are an American of Indian descent. And ah. I love that. And, um, I, I have to tell you, I oftentimes I just do what most folks do and, and put the ethnicity before the American. But I love, love that. And I just, it, it, you know, as you were talking, I just remembered back and, just his, you know, his mission to kind of help us all understand that we are all one. You know, before we, we celebrate the difference, let's all just recognize our common humanity. Mm, yeah, well, especially during this past year, we've all learned to appreciate that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the things, I think there's so many things that we can talk about, but one of the things I just wanted to mention is uh, you recently received some really great news. One of your books, Seven Golden Rings, was recognized for being uh, an, an amazing book. Tell us a little bit about that award. Yes, um, Seven Golden Rings, which is my debut picture book that came out in October 2020, um, won uh, a Navigal Book Prize for grades three to five. Um, which is so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. tell it, tell us about the Mathical Prize. I've, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. So, um, this is for, um, it's an annual award and it's, um, it encompasses both fiction and nonfiction books. And, um, these are for books that inspire children to see math and the world around them. So it ranges from kind of, um, biography, um, uh, you know, and pure nonfiction in that way to stories, um, to fiction stories that have math elements in them. And there are, um, age categories. So, um, there's a, a pre-K category, a, a kindergarten through two, grades three to five, um, kind of, um, middle grades and then high school. And, um, it's really exciting. So they have, um, one winner for each age category and then, uh, several honored books. And, um, yeah, I was completely thrilled. And there was an award, a Zoom award ceremony that I got to take 
part in yesterday, and I read part of Seven Golden Rings, and it was great fun. Well, that's great. Congratulations for that. You know, I kind of didn't really address um, the, the fact that, 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 that Red, White, and Whole is a middle-grade novel written in verse. That's yes. that's a challenge to to write like that. Um, it, did is writing in verse something that that just comes naturally to you? So I will tell you, when I first got the idea for this story, it was as a metaphor. It was um, uh, the metaphor of blood and all that it means in terms of biology, of course, mm-hmm. but also in terms of. Um, family and heredity and community and what um, what it means. And so I was like, okay. And then I had a general idea of what the story would be. And I knew it would be very emotional and I knew it would very, be very interior. So I knew that we were going to be inside this character's head for the whole story. And I thought it would be good to write it in verse because of those things. And I had never written something in verse um, I, um, I mean, I write picture books that are lyrical. Um, some of them are in rhyme. Um, but I've never written a novel, um, like this. And so it's, it's in free verse. And the, what, what I did was I basically read every verse novel I could get my hands on, um, for young readers and kind of, um, taught myself what worked, what I liked, what I appreciated. And then I just tried. And, um, then I kind of, was shaking in my boots when I sent pieces to my critique group and they seemed to like it. So I said, all right, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> but this, this, um, this story poured out of me. Um, it was almost like, so when, when you write in verse, as opposed to writing in prose, cause my other novels were in prose. Um, when you write in verse, you think about um, moments in time or images that you want to convey. And then you just write a poem. Mm-hmm. So each chapter is a poem. Um, and the best part of it is, um, is that there's plenty of white space on the page, so you can convey a lot of information with very few words. But because of the white space on the page, even if you're dealing with really emotional topics, I feel like there's enough breathing room and space in the reader's mind to kind of deal with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm wondering if when you're immersed in that research and then in the process of writing, did you find yourself... Thinking in verse, were you going into your job as a practicing physician and, you know, diagnosing people in verse or having that run through your head? (laughs) That's so interesting. I don't, you know, probably not. I think though that when I, when I, when I sat down to write, I like it would come to me pretty naturally. In my job as a physician, I'm telling you the notes that I write are probably the most boring things you will ever read in your life. Like it is, it just, it just has to be just like the facts, ma'am. And just like the, you know, just like really bland writing. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it is, it was fun then to come home and say, okay, now I'm going to write as evocatively as possible. Wow. I, I, I know folks are out there kind of shaking their head going, where does she find the time? To write and research, and you know, we think of physicians as going, you know, a hundred miles an hour and all those hours and having to keep up with the latest in, in, in medicine and, and, you know, learning about different drugs and whatnot, and especially this past year. But you find time to do it. Yes, you know, <laughs> so I think that we all realize that when we're obsessed with something, we always find time to do it. So yes, I, I'm obsessed with writing. And when there is a story in your head, um, I, I literally would be driving uh, somewhere and I would have to get the phone out to dictate my thoughts. Like I have to, I have to get these out of my head before I forget them. Or I would wake up at three in the morning and like take notes on my phone because I just had to, I, I had to get things down. Um, so yeah, there are times when you're just kind of possessed by a story and you have to, you have to write. Um, but I also think that, um, you know, the good thing about medicine is that you learn early on that like you have to, you have to get all the work done kind of quickly, um, and on time, but then there is a time at which you have to switch it off and let whoever is on call deal with the on call stuff. Because if you're on 24 seven, you'll, you'll never, like, you'll never survive. You'll just mm-hmm. burn out so quickly. Mm-hmm. So the good news is that I can compartmentalize some of the stuff from my, um, medical work and just get it done when I'm there. And then when I come home, you know, put it away for a little while. Yeah. 
Do you plan on writing uh, more in verse? Yes, because I kind of love it. <laughs> yeah, my my current project is um, it's a challenge because it's half in verse and half in prose. So we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm fascinated. I know the folks are going to want to know where they can find out more about Red, White, and Whole and where they can find out more about you. Yes, I have all kinds of information on my website, um, which is www.rajanilaraka.com. It's R-A-J-A-N-I-L-A-R-O-C-C-A.com. Awesome. We've had a great time speaking with the author of Red, White, and Whole, a great middle grade novel in verse, written by our guest, Rajani Lavraka. Rajani, thank you so much for being part of our show. Jed, thanks so much for having me. I had a wonderful time. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Andrew Loria. He'll be here to celebrate the adventures of Charlie Marley. That's the next episode of the podcast. Hey, if you are the author of a fantastic children's book, you might want to take a look at our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program. It's a wonderful program that can really help your book stand out from the crowd of books that are published every single month. You know, every single month, there are literally thousands of books published, and it's really difficult for a book to stand out. You want parents to know that your book is worthy of their consideration. If our panel believes that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes a number of really helpful promotional tools. Check it out today. Go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. Scroll on down to Certified Great Reads. Want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, want to thank our guest, Rajani Lavraka. Be sure to check out Red, White, and Whole and also the Seven Golden Rings. Also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan, Hannah Pat Oboiski, Alexia Brown. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you for helping us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. And most of all, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>